how many plans on going with him when he comes back? Amen. I plan on leaving with him when he comes. And tell you what, we have felt the presence of the Lord, haven't we? I have felt the presence of the Lord since I've been here. And I'm going to tell you what I feel in my soul today. I feel like somebody needs to get right with the Lord. Somebody needs to get saved. Somebody needs to get washed in the blood. Listen, it's, it's not a light thing when the Lord comes by and convicts a soul. It's not a light thing. God's given you an invitation to escape hell's fire. God's given you an invitation to get things right before it's too late. God's given you an invitation to escape that judgment when he casts you into hell. God's given you an opportunity to escape the judgment of hell. Uh, hell's not, not going to be a fun place, sinner friend. It's not going to be a fun place. Listen, one of the most awful things you're going to experience, not just the flames. The flames is going to be bad. The Bible talks about the gnashing of teeth and how where the worm dieth not. All of that's going to be awful. But you know what's going to be really awful? To be completely absent from the presence of the Lord. Completely. Completely absent. See, right now, as a, as a sinner, you walk uh, uh, without fellowship with God. Uh, you walk in a place where you cannot communicate with God. Uh, some people say, uh, well, God hears a sinner's prayer. He hears the repentance prayer of a sinner. But the Bible said, for we know that God heareth not the prayer of a sinner. That's in the New Testament, in the four Gospels. God said, we, he don't hear a sinner's prayer except the prayer of repentance. But the Bible also says that the world is full of the presence of God. You might not have fellowship with him, but his presence is still amongst us. But when you die and go to hell, not only do you not have fellowship with God, but the presence of God's not in hell, sinner friend. The mercy of God's not in hell. The grace of God's not in hell. You know, there's no exits in hell. Once you enter hell, that's it. There's no exit signs. I was in church when I was a little boy, a little boy. And uh, we was having Bible study. Back then we had it on Thursday nights. And the power went out. There was a storm and it was dark. And there was light coming in from the windows. Power went completely out. You couldn't see nobody around you. Just a, a little center block church. But that exit sign lit up in that dark. You could see the exit signs shining. Praise God, there's no exit signs in hell. But I'm telling you right now, in this world of darkness, there is an exit sign shining. Praise the Lord. I said there is an exit sign shining today where you can escape hell. Praise God. I said there's an exit sign shining today. You can escape hell. Praise God. You can get out of it. You don't have to go to hell. Oh, God, I got a message, but I'm trying not to have to preach it. Praise God. Uh, for 10 years, I was born in 97. And for 10 years, God gave me the great opportunity to get to live with my oldest sister for 10 years. The year 2007, I've probably told it, my sister passed away at the, at the young age of 16 years old. Well, I've been, I've, I'm 24 years old, and I look, I look through my life, and I feel like it's just went by just like that. I couldn't imagine 16 years old and go and be with the Lord. 16 years old, only 10 years I had with her, uh, but she was right with God. I watched my mama. I'm, I'm trying to obey the Lord right here. I watched my mama uh, go through one of the hardest trials she has ever faced in all of her life. And uh, I hope to God she never has to bury another child because I just about believe it would kill her brother. It all but killed my mama when we had to bury my sister. But I watched as she agonized with God. Why, Lord, why? Why, why, why? But I'm telling you, she had one comfort. She was saved. She was saved. Listen, sinner friend, young or old, when you leave this world, if you're lost, we have no comfort for you. We have no comfort because we know where you are. We know where you are. 
we, uh, we, uh, uh, oh, everybody's probably said it just about. We say, well, hopefully they got it right before it was too late. But I'm telling you, the way the tree falls, so shall it lay. I'm a, everybody don't get the opportunity to get it right, right before they die. Everybody don't get to get that opportunity. I'm getting ready to preach, but I'm going to tell this story. Uh, there was this young girl that pushed God away. She pushed God away and pushed God away. And once she said, hey, right before I die, I'll get it right with God. Well, the, her, her last day come, and she got in a car wreck. And the story goes that somehow she got through out of the car, and she got put under the car. And they said that, it, uh, that she got ready to call on the Lord. And, and the, the, ga- the oil nut come loose. And it went into her mouth. And while she was calling on the Lord, she got choked up. Couldn't call on him. I don't know how, what happened after that. But the story went on to say she did not get a chance to get it right with God. Come on now. Is that going to be how it is for you? Oh, God, help us, Jesus. Book of Jonah, chapter number one. Jonah, chapter number one. Praise the Lord. I've been wrestling with this for uh, seven days. And uh, I, I thought the Lord was going to go a different way with this. You just have to bear with me today. I'm, I'm having to follow the Lord. Praise God. Book of Jonah, chapter number one. Starting in verse number six. Amen. I appreciate Brother Andrew for allowing us to come today. Allowing us to be with Mount Zion. Uh, Jonah, chapter one, starting in verse six. If you have it, would you say amen? amen. Jonah, one and six. Praise God. I'll give you just a few more moments. Praise God. Don't chapter 1, starting in verse 6. If you have it, would you say amen? amen? The Bible said, So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. Verse number 7, the Bible says, And they said every one to his fellow, Come and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is come upon us. What is thine occupation, and whence comest thou? What is thy country, and of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said, one unto, said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea that the sea may be calm unto us. For the sea wrought and was tempest. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was tempest against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life and lay not upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Praise God. Look it back with me. Praise the Lord. In verse number 12, the Bible said, And he said unto them, Take me up 
and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be come unto us. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Jonah already knew the problem. They didn't have to catch lots, Brother Cummins, to find out what the problem was. Jonah knew the problem. And he said, if you cast me overboard, it'll be a calm. I want to preach today if the Lord will help me on throw Jonah overboard. Just for a second, would you stretch your hands this way and ask God to help us today. Dear gracious heavenly. church say amen. amen. Praise God. <clears throat> we all know the story of Jonah. Uh, uh, growing up in Sunday school, uh, Jonah was a, a, a familiar lesson that they taught us in Sunday school. It was a familiar lesson in vacation Bible school. We all know that uh, Jonah, God spoke to Jonah and said, I want you to go to Nineveh and, uh, and preach to Nineveh and tell them to repent from their evil ways. Uh, but Jonah was scared of Nineveh. Jonah said, hey, God, if I go down to Nineveh, Nineveh, put, Nineveh will put me to death. If they do not repent, if they don't get it right, Nineveh kill me. And uh, Jonah said, hey, I'd rather go to Tarshish. I'd rather get on the ship and go to Tarshish. But God said, not so, Jonah. I want you to go down to Nineveh. I want you to preach to them and say, repent. But Jonah had other plans. And Jonah got him a ticket. And he got on board the ship. And he made his way towards Tarshish. And the Bible said a storm come up. And the ship was tossed to and fro. And they thought they were going to die in the storm. Praise God. The Bible said they wondered. Oh, wow, that this great tempest come upon them. Why have this storm come where there was? The Bible said they cast things overboard. Brother Robert trying to stay aboard the ship, trying to stay aboard the, uh, above the water. But everything that they done, they could not find help. It got worse and worse and worse. And the Bible said they went down to where Jonah was and said, Get up, O sleeper. Arise and call upon thy God. The first thing that I notice when I read through this, through the, uh, these verses of Scripture, the first thing that come to my mind, the first thing that caught my attention was that Jonah was asleep. How do you go to sleep out of the presence of God? How do you find rest when you're out of the will of God? I'm telling you, how do you find a place to rest when you know you're going the wrong way? But Jonah was asleep, and they come where Jonah was, and he said, Wake up, old sleeper. Uh, get up. Call upon thy God. The Bible said they got to calling upon their gods, and they cast lots. They said, What's, what, what we're going to do is we're going to find out where the problem lies. There was another time in the Old Testament where there was a problem among the people, and they said, Hey, we're going to get everybody together. And we're going to say, hey, I want you to praise the Lord. And the Bible said it got to where I believe it was Achan. Uh, it, if my mind serves me right, it got to his turn. And the Bible said, Achan, praise the Lord. And he could not praise God. And he told on himself. Y'all remember reading that? Praise the Lord. That sin told on him. Praise God. That's where Jonah was. The lot fell upon Jonah. And it told the story that Jonah was not supposed to be on board the ship. God dealt with my heart. God dealt with me seven days ago. And he said somebody needs to be told that you're out of the will of God. You're sailing the wrong way. Praise God, it's time to turn around. Oh God, help me Lord. Oh God. Jonah, uh, realized they cast lots on Jonah and the story was told. Jonah tried to hide it. Jonah paid his fee. 
got his ticket and he went down below the ship and he tried to hide. He tried to cover it up. He got away from everybody. When we get out of the will of the Lord, when we get out of the presence of God, we try to hide it and we try to get away from everybody else. But the comfort Jonah was, and they said, get up. And God told on Jonah to cast lots. And it fell on Jonah. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said Jonah told him everything. Told him where he was from. Who he was kin to. Praise God. And what he was doing. And why he was here. He said, hey, God told me to go to Nineveh. But I had better plans. I was going to go to Tarshish. Escape the will of God. Oh, Lord, help me today. Somebody here is out of the will of God. Jonah did not have to ask. God, we find a lot of times, uh, y'all bear with me, I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, we, we find ourselves in the same predicament that Jonah's in, except for us. We try to pretend like we don't know the reason why we're going through what we're going through. We try to pretend. We try to put on a mask. We try to cover it up. We we'll, we get in a hard place, and we'll call everybody around us and say, "Pray for me. I don't understand why I'm going through this. Pray for me. I don't know why God seemed fit for me to go through what I'm going through. It wasn't that way for Jonah. Jonah knew exactly why he was in the place that he was in. Jonah knew why." And Joe confessed it, Brother Paul. He said, God sent me one way, but I went another. And you know what he done? He gave him a fix for the problem. He said, if you cast me off this ship, all your problems will be over. You see, you come to a calm, and you can go about your way, and it will be between me and God. I come to tell somebody today, if you throw the problem overboard, if you throw the problem off the boat, your life would be a whole lot easier. If you throw the problem overboard, the storm would come to a calm. Brother Franklin, the first thing they had to do, brother, was they had to find the problem. When, when they found where the hole was, they, could, they had to find a way to fix it. And the only way to fix it was to cast Jonah overboard. That was the only way to fix the problem. A lot of you's got a hole somewhere, praise God, and you've tried to block it up with a quick fix. You've tried to stop it up with a quick fix. But until you throw Jonah overboard, you're going to be in the same place every day. I was praying, brother, uh, Woodrow, about problems. And I wondered, you know, what kind of problems would cause such a great storm? What kind of problem would, uh, would cause us and scares, uh, scare us so bad that we'd run from God? What's, what, what's causing the problem? Lost man, I want to ask you a question right here. What's stopping you from praying to God? What's stopping you from getting right with God? I want you to look over your life. Everywhere you turn, there's pain. Everywhere you turn, there's a problem. Everything you put your hands to, it crumbles. Every time you try to fix this, another problem pops up. And every time God convicts you, you say, hey, when I get this right, I'll call upon the Lord. But you never can get it right. Brother, until you get the seeing out, you'll never be able to fix your problems. Until you call upon the Lord, sinner friend, and kneel down before, praise God, the plunge of that, that flow of that uh, royal red blood, that ruby red blood, until you kneel down before God and he washes you clean of your sin, you'll never fix the problem. Saint of God, 
until you get right with God, you will never possess the power of God. Oh, God, help me right here, Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Can I obey the Lord, Brother Andrew? Praise God. I want to I wanna talk about just for a second on the family. Can I do that? On, on the house. Uh, there's a lot of families today. And I do believe, if I'm, I'm trusting the Lord right here, I do believe there's some families here that's got some things mixed up and there's some problems somewhere. And I don't care how pretty that you paint the picture, God sees the problem. I said, God sees the problem. You can hide it. You can paint over it. You can cover it up. You can sweep it under your rug. But God sees the problem. I'm going to start with the husband. Because he's the head of the house. The husband's supposed to be the provider of the home. He's supposed to be the caretaker of the home. He's supposed to be the one that brings the bread to the home. Come on now. Somebody say amen to me. Somewhere along the line, we've got it twisted. We forgot that God told the man to provide and the woman to be a caretaker at the home. Come on now. now there's nothing wrong with a woman working. But I'm telling you, it gets out of order when the man's laying at home and the woman's trying to pay the bills. It's out of order. You can say what you want to. Uh, me and my wife had a plan that she'd work and I'd take care of the stuff at home. Well, you're out of the will of the Word of God. The man's supposed to work. Mama said, if a man don't work, he does not eat. Come on now. Praise the Lord. Then there's another problem I want to deal with today. Uh, there, the, the man is supposed to be the head of the house. He's supposed to rule over the house. Sister, can I use y'all just for an example? Would that be all right? Praise God. Brother, your wife's supposed to be subject unto you. You're supposed to call the shots. You're supposed to make the plans. Brother Andrew, Sister Crystal is not supposed to call the shots. Sister Crystal is not supposed to make the plans. She's not supposed to say, this is the way it's going to happen. And this is the way it's supposed to go. Brother Andrew is supposed to call the shots. Oh God, I'm going to preach right here. I felt this in my soul. And I'm going to preach it whether you like it or not. There's a lot of people today. There's a lot of people today whose house is out of order because the man is scared of the wife. You can say what you want to. If some of our brothers would grow a backbone, they'd get a whole lot closer to God. Brother, you want to know why? You want to know why our families can't get close to God? And why, why our men can't get full of the power of God and the sisters can't get full of the power of God somewhere down the road somebody's got roles twisted in the home and God's not going to bless mess Bible said he's not the author of confusion and listen here brothers when you can't run your own house God cannot give you the power of God we got a lot of brothers they'll say hey I want to do this and that wife, I go to fussing. And that wife, I go to fussing. Oh, God. Brother Andrew, brother, if I get a line, brother, you sit me down. Praise God. There's a lot of houses today where that man, man says something. That hen goes to fussing. And she starts a, a jabbering on, telling that man, I don't want to go there. I don't want to do that. You can go if you want to, but I'm not going. I got news for you, sister. If God's come back right then, you'd get left behind. Come on now. Oh, God, I got to pray. And God got to talking to me about folks seeking for the Holy Ghost. And why they couldn't get it. There's some married couples, brother. God spoke to me and said, there's some married couples that's seeking for the Holy Ghost. And they can't get it because they can't get the order in their life. They can't find which way it's supposed to go. 
sisters, until you find a way to humble yourself down, and when your husband says something, just follow it. Come on now. As long as it's not something uh, steering you away from God and God's laws, until you can find a way to trust that man that you said for better or worse for, until you can find that man, uh, trust that man that you told God you'd follow him, until you find your way where you can humble yourself to trust him, you'll never get the Holy Ghost. I said never get the Holy Ghost. Come on now. I knew before Brother Andrew put me up here, it was going to be a little quiet. Praise God. But I'm telling you, until Jonah gets off the ship, it'll never get in order. That storm will never calm down. Listen, brothers, you're supposed to be the head. Be the head. Sisters, you're supposed to follow in line. You're not supposed to fight his battles. God, help me right here, Holy Ghost. God, help me. There's a lot of women. Well, oh, God, help me. I, I know I'm barking, sisters. Y'all bear with me, all right? Praise God. The brother, the, when, the, when the fight comes to the house, a lot of our brothers uh, sit back, and their brother they ain't got enough of backbone to fight the battle. And our women want to see the man stand up. They want to see him take care of the problem. But a lot, of our, a lot of our men ain't got a backbone to take care of the problem. So you know what that does? He's out of order. So the wife gets out of order. And she said, if you can't handle the problem, I'll handle the problem. And she tries to fight the battle. Listen, sisters, your place is not to fight the battle. Your place is just to buckle his armor. Your place is just to strap it on. And I'm telling you, until you get it right, you will not possess the power of God. Listen, brothers and sisters, until you get them babies in order, you will not possess the power of God. Oh, Lord. I know the first thing probably some thinking, you ain't got a wife and you ain't got a child. Praise God. Don't matter whether I do or not. The Bible still got guidelines. The Bible still got a road map. And I'm telling you right here that until you get the problem in order, your life will never come to a calm. That storm will never calm down. You've got to get Jonah off the boat. Praise God. Won't you lift your hands toward heaven? Say, God, help me today. You know the problem. I ain't got to tell you the problem. You know the problem, don't you? You know the problem. You know your life better than anybody knows your life. Praise God, you and God's the only ones that know your life as good as you know your life. God's the only one that knows it, brother. God knows the problem, and you know the problem. Amen, brother. Praise God. You know the problem. God ain't got to tell you. God didn't have to tell Jonah what the problem was, brother. Jonah knew the problem. Jonah said, hey, if you cast me off the ship, all your problems will be over. Jonah knew the problem. I wonder today, what's your problem? What's your problem? What's your problem, saint of God? What's holding you back, sinner friend? Why you can't get right with God? What's holding you back, saint of God, from having a power of God? Praise God. What's holding you back? What's hindering you? What's stopping you from getting where you're supposed to be? You know the problem. God's come by. I'm talking to a Jonah. Jonah, you know the problem. You know why the, why the problem's in your life. Praise God. There's a lot of people. There's, there's, there's two different types of storms. Storms. There's one like God made Job fight. And it was God, the, the devil come where God was. And God trusted Job. And he knew he could trust Job. And he said, if you try him, he won't walk away from me. He won't turn away from me. He won't curse me. Praise God, he'll stick right with me. God knew that Job would trust God. There's another trial when God's trying to get your attention. Come on now. The man of God, Paul, 
uh, was about to be was about to come before uh, the the judges of Rome. They were taking him back to Rome to be judged for preaching the gospel, and they put him on board a ship and they started making their way, and they stopped somewhere along the way. And uh, Paul told the man, the captain of the ship, he said, it's not a good day to sail. God said, don't sail today. But uh, they figured, hey, Paul's just trying to get out of being judged. Paul's trying to get out of his punishment. And they sailed anyways. And they got out there in that storm, Eurachlodon, come up. Y'all remember the storm, Eurachlodon? I did some studying all about that storm. It's not called Eurachlodon anymore. It's called the north wind. It's a wind that, uh, that blows out of the north. And it blows hard and storms hard. They said usually no longer than 10 days. It still happens to this very day. Uh, nowadays ships are so big and so, got so much they don't have to really worry about that storm anymore. So it's not talked about because it's not really sinking ships anymore. Uh, but they said that that north wind would blow and they said it would last, usually at the longest, it would last 10 days, no more than 10 days most of the time. But every once in a while, when it was really, really bad, it would last more than 10 days. Well, the Bible said that that storm lasted in the Bible for 14 days. It had been 14 days since they seen the sunshine. been 14 days since they seen the calm that them sailors had seen that storm before. It, uh, they, it, they were used to that storm, but they was not used for it being so bad and lasting so long. So they started throwing stuff overboard, brother, trying to stay afloat. Trying to stay afloat. Trying to stay afloat. Trying to stay up above the waves. I wonder today who's here amongst us trying to stay above the waves. And it seems like you're getting nowhere. Seems like, like you're not uh, like you're not being successful. I want to tell you, brother and sister, if you get Jonah off the ship, you'll sail and it'll be a whole lot easier. I said, God will calm the storm, but you're gonna have to cast. Jonah overboard. The Bible said that he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. It don't matter whether you're a sinner or a saint. God will bless you. And God will, God will send trials your way. But I'm going to tell you, brother, there comes a time when you can fix the problem. Come on now. You can stop the judgment of God. You can, you can stop God. Oh, God, I know some of you is probably saying, I wish he'd hurry up. And I'm telling you today, until you fix the problem, it ain't going to get no better. We're all guilty of it at some point in time. Every one of us, from the pulpit to the back door. Come on now. Everyone up had to cast Jonah off the ship before. But uh, after so long, some of us finally come to our senses, and we cast him off. But there's some people amongst us today. I believe it, brother. There's some people amongst us today. They got such a tight hold on what's causing their problem that they will not let it go and it's about to sink them brother I said it's about to sink them it's about to sink you oh God there's a story I heard a preacher say one time he said there was a preacher friend of his that every morning there was this aggravating raccoon in his yard and it lived up in his attic and uh, it was just a preacher telling a story but it's got a you can, it's got a pretty good moral meaning behind it. He said he had a little hole up in the gable end of his house. And that coon was living in that up in his attic. And it was messing up his attic all night long. They heard that coon a, a messing around. And in the mornings before that man would leave, at, uh, or in the evenings when that man would get that preacher would get home, that coon would be in his yard. And he went out there one day. And he got the water hose after it, trying to chase it off. And he sprayed it with the water hose. And it ran up a tree, ran across a limb, jumped into the gable end of the house. Didn't fix his problem, did it? 
The next day, he went out there, got him a BB gun, and he, and he got shooting that raccoon with the BB gun. And it ran up the, that tree, ran across that branch, and jumped right back into the gable in that house. Can't stop the problem, Greg. Come on. You can, you can tan its hide. You can try to baptize it. And it still don't fix the problem till you get it off the ship. Well, the next day, that coon was in the yard again. And that brother was tired of the coon. And he got a chase in that coon with a stick through the yard. And it ran up into a brush pile that he had to clean up his yard. He piled up some, some limbs. Well, he said, hey, you stay right there, Mr. Coon. I'm going to fix you today. He went in his garage, got him a long stick. And it wrapped up with them old garage rags. Y'all know them ones that mechanics have hanging out their pockets. He wrapped that stick with it, stoked it in diesel fuel, and set it on fire. Went to where that, that brother was, Brother Woodrow. And I was thinking, no, he didn't. Before that man preacher ever finished with that story, I was thinking, I hope he had more sense than what I think he's about to do. But he didn't. Praise God. He went to where that brush pile was, Brother Paul, and set it on fire. Well, the coon caught on fire. Guess what happened? It went up that tree, crossed that branch, and it back, went right back into the gable end of the house, burned the house all the way to the ground. He got rid of the coon, but he burned everything down with him. Praise God. That's kind of funny, ain't it? Praise God, but that's what some of you are doing. You try to tan its hide, and it didn't work. You try to baptize it, but it didn't work. You try to burn it out, but it didn't work. And I'm telling you, until you close up the hole, it's going to keep coming back. Woo! I said it's going to keep coming back. Brother, if I could tell that man one thing today, Brother Lowe sell plywood, you could attack it in the of that hole and you wouldn't have burned your house down. Some of us has got so much sense, we don't know what to do with it. I'll just chase him off. I'll just drown him, praise God. I'll just tan his hide. I'll just burn it out. Praise God. My, uh, my papa. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Woo. We, uh, I was raised on a farm. 100 acres. Cows, hogs, and chickens. And in my life, we didn't sell the stuff. In my life, seen a man. Why'd you need so many chickens? Had over 200 chickens. Aggravating chickens. <laughs> God, all over the yard, had to watch where you step. I wondered, Papa, you and me, Ma, that's what we call my grandma, me, Ma, you and me, Ma, ain't going to eat no 200 eggs. Why in the world y'all got 200 chickens? Well, he had a bad rat problem. Had holes all, all through the coops, all through there. And Papa thought, whoo, I got a bright idea. He said, I'll fix this rat. It's causing the disease. Chickens was dying. The hole went in right at the beginning of the, of the cub. And it went all tunneled all the way through. Come up in the middle of the pen. Had about six or seven holes all through the pen, all around that cub. And it was, it, you know, it wouldn't post. And it was framed up, boxed in, and wired over, if you can imagine that. So there's plenty of things to burn. Well, he said, I'll fix this rat. He pulled gas down all the holes. I mean, filled them up. I was a little boy, and I knew this was a bad idea. <laughs> Praise God. But he struck a match, and he threw it down the hole. Boo! Blowed up. Blowed a hole in the ground. Fire with the gas slung all over the pins. And just about burned, I mean, set the pin on fire. And he starts hollering at the water hose, you know. I know this is funny right here, but I'm going somewhere. 
me and my cousins running, I mean running crazy, running for the hose, running for buckets. Papa's kicking dirt, you know, trying to put out the fire. He thought, hey, I'll fix the problem. I'll burn it out. Come on now. It sounds funny, don't it? Imagine what you look like. Come on now. You doing the same thing? Trying to patch it up. Thank you, brother. Fast, a fast fix. A quick fix. And it's blowing up. It's blowing up. Come on now. Sinner friend, aren't you tired of the fast fix? Aren't you tired of it blowing up in your face? Hey, saying of God, you should know better. Aren't you tired of it blowing up in your face? We had sand spurs. God help me right here. I'm telling a lot of stories. We had sand spurs bad across that farm. We had my family graveyard. And I tell you what, I, I never walked across the grave. We was country people. We walked barefooted everywhere. You know what? There were certain places on the farm you had to watch where you walked. And uh, we didn't know there were sand spurs in the graveyard. We cut across the graveyard one day and I got ate up with sand spurs. <laughs> Fell out in the grass trying to get them out of my feet and got them all in our clothes. It was just a bad day. Well, Papa decided we'd burn off the graveyard. Try to fix the problem. It, we burnt off the graveyard. Burned off his burned off his yard. No problems happened, thank God. We burned burned all that grass up. He was hoping maybe it fixed the problem, but guess what? Next spring come. There are sand spurs right back in the graveyard. Didn't fix the problem, brother. I wonder today, when are you gonna realize your little cover ups ain't fixing the problem? What's it going to take? It blowed up in my papa's face. He realized that wasn't a good way to go about it anymore. And it's probably been 10, 12, 13 years now. We still laugh at that. Burned off the, uh, burned off the yard several times, Brother Eric. And now I realize that didn't work. And we started throwing stuff out, trying to, stuff you buy in the store, trying to fix the problem. And it's, it's working. There's a way to fix the problem, brother. There's a way to fix the problem. Praise God. But well, this little, uh, little quack, fast fixes that you're trying to, to come up with ain't working. What's it going to take? I'm getting ready to come to a close. Praise God. Sister Rachel, will you come to the piano, sister? Will you play that song, sister? Sister uh, Demer, uh Lord, sister, I forgot your name. Y'all were singing a while ago. Praise God. Brother Frankie's daughter. What's your name, sister? Selena. Selena. Praise God. Would you play that song? Uh, we, we've, we've tried to fix it. That prodigal son uh, left his father's home. His father gave him all that money that was, that was coming his way. And he went out there and he spent it on righteous living. And he lived it up. Lost all of his money. He tried to fix his problems. You know what he done? The Bible said he went and joined himself to a man of that country. And the man put him in the hog pen. Made him slop the hogs every day. Wasn't making enough of money to feed his own self, Brother Paul. But he was out there laying in the hog pen, sleeping in the hog pen. Just about, Sister Charlene, just about to eat that slop with the hogs. Had nowhere else to go. Had no more money. The prodigal son come to himself. And he said, hey, there's a better way than this. I'll go back to my father's house. He's got bread and nothing to spare. He's got plenty of room. I'll just ask him for a job as one of his servants. And I'll just eat the food that's given to the servants. And everything will be all right. That's the, that's the fix that the prodigal son come up with. He finally come up with the right one. When are you going to come up with the right one? What's it going to take? Well, the men in the storm at Rockland Don, no matter how much they cast off the ship, Sister Crystal, it wasn't working. But thank God for their sakes, there's a man of God on board the ship. Brothers and sisters, you know what he said? Stay on board. Stay on board. Not a life will be lost if you stay on board. 
Well, the ship was torn apart. There was no more ship, but they had something to float on, and nobody died, and they were able to float the land. Before they jumped overboard, you know what? They said, hey, let, let, let's try this. Well, well, either way, we're going to wind up in the water. Let's just trust the Word of God. And it worked. It rescued them out of their problem. It worked. Jonah, throw them in, cast them overboard. They didn't want to cast him overboard. God don't want to have to punish you like he has to. God, God don't want to have to try to get your attention the way he's having to get your attention. That's not God's, what God would want to do. That's not his desire. It's for everything you touch to crumble. It's not his desire for him to have to punish you every time you turn around. Hey, wake up. Wake up. That's not God's will. Them men tried their best to keep from throwing him overboard. But there was no way. There was no way out of it. They threw Jonah overboard, brother. And God had a fix for Jonah. I said, God had a fix for Jonah. God, the Bible said, God prepared a fish. Praise the Lord. And it swallowed. The Bible said, when he fell in that water, everything calmed, brother. Everything come to a calm. That fish come up, that well, and he swallowed Jonah up. Brother, and do you know, we didn't, we didn't get that far in the reading of the scripture today. But do you know what happened to Jonah? For three days and three nights, Jonah had to sleep in the belly of a fish. Oh, God. What a way to have to get somebody's attention. A few uh, years ago, might have been a hundred years ago, something like that. But there was a there was a, a story going around, like men are still trying to do to this day. They're trying to belittle the word of God. They're trying to say it's not true. And they did the study of a whale. They said the the throat of a whale is not big enough to swallow man. That's why they have to eat them. I can't remember what they call krill or something like that. And them little itty bitty fish. That's why they have to swallow them. Because their throat's not big enough to consume anything bigger than that. That's what they say in certain types of whales. And uh, they said that there was a man, there's some fishermen. And they were out fishing. And this man fell off the ship. And before they could get him back on the ship, Brother Woodrow, they said a whale come up and swallowed that man. And the, the, the story went on, they hunted and hunted and hunted for that whale. And they finally caught him. It took them two days. But they finally caught that whale. And they, they pulled that whale up. And you know the story. They had, you, or you know how they had to do it. They had to cut him open to get that man out. And to their surprise, that man was still alive. They said that from the, from the, 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 the acid in his belly... That, that, that well, it had took the pigmentation completely out of that man's skin. Had turned his eyes completely white. Turned him blind. And uh, he, he, he lost all of his hair. There was no hair on his whole body. Took the hair completely off his head, off of his body. He was just a sight to see. And now they believe that a whale can swallow a man. Could you imagine the shape that Jonah was in after three days in the belly of a fish? Praise God. I guarantee you when he got to Nineveh, everybody knew this man had been through something. He wasn't just, all right, Lord, I'm trying to hurry up. God, help me. It wasn't just, hey, uh, when he jumped up, when God that will speed him out, and he landed on, on the shore. It wasn't like some of us do. We pray, get things right, and we take our time. And we just act like, hey, all right, I'll get it right. And it's just brush it off, you know. That wasn't how Jonah done it. The Bible said it was a three days journey from where he was to get to Nineveh. And the Bible, the Bible said that he made that three days journey in a day. Oh, Jonah was desperate to get to Nineveh. 
How desperate are you? Oh, God. Uh, he, I could imagine that Jonah ran into Nineveh. He went quiet. He went timid. And he went shy. He went nervous to preach this today like I was, brother. He was ready. Praise God. He was, he was, he was itching to tell Nineveh to repent. What's it going to take for you? Is it going to take a well? Come on now. Is it going to take a Pharaoh's army on your back to get your attention? What's it going to take for you, saint of God? Oh, Lord, help me right here. This is my first time preaching on a Sunday morning at Mount Zion. First time. I was so happy and honored when Brother Andrew asked me to preach on a Sunday morning. That ain't like a Wednesday night or a Sunday night. There's something special about Sunday morning. I was so honored, Brother Andrew, when you asked me to come. But there are some faces here today that I haven't seen at Mount Zion on the other times I've preached here. There's some, there's some, there's some new faces, Brother Robert, that I hadn't seen on Wednesday nights and Sunday nights. I got a question for you. What's hindering you from being in the house of God? What's stopping you? There, I'm, I'm trying to hurry. You bear with me. I've got to deliver my soul today. But there, there is a judgment day coming. A, a, a judgment day. You will not escape that day. You will not escape that day. Sister Marcella, we can say we're Christians all we want to. Come to church once a week when we know the church is, has it all week long. But God is only important enough to go for one service for just a couple hours of the day. Something's wrong somewhere. Something's wrong somewhere. God, uh, God sent His only begotten Son to die for us. He bled and died. There will never, ever be another man martyred to the point that Christ was martyred for you. And you mean to tell me that He's not important enough to come more than once a week for more than three hours a week? God's not more important than that. 33 years he left the splinters of heaven for you and he's not more important to you than three hours of the day one day a week God but Lord I'm scared to drive at night brother I'm scared to drive alone at night preach I work hard all day long I work hard too. I dug a, a almost a hundred, it was 86 feet to be exact, long ditch yesterday, trying to fix something for a man. 86 feet. I dug it by hand, brother. I was tired when I got home. I went to bed. I come home last night and uh, went by Brother Andrew's house and uh, went home and I, I, I took a shower. And God, I, I laid down in the bed. My plan was I was going to read a little bit of the Bible before I lay down. I put the Bible, had it on me. And when I laid, woke up this morning, it was right where it was when I went to sleep. I understand being tired. I completely understand that. Imagine how Christ felt. Oh, preacher, I got to work. I got to pay my bills. My bills is important. I wonder how God felt. Sending his son for you. Wonder how God felt. Wonder how God felt. I wonder today uh, if I'd ask you a question. How important God is to you? Everybody said, "Oh, he's most important," wouldn't you? You say God's most important. God's the most important thing in my life. That's what we'd all say. But brother, if we could have, you know, just if God would open the screen up before us today. And he'd play the story of our lives. If he start up here with a men of God, work his way down to everybody, every individual person. And he'd play our lives for everybody to see. Oh, I wonder if, if our life would say he's most important. Oh, God. 
In the uh, book of Psalms, I'm getting, would you stand all over the Lord's house? The psalmist asked a question to the Lord. He said, search me, O Lord. See if I be a God. My make no mistake, that's in Psalms. Praise the Lord. When God searches us, when God searches our lives, is he going to find you to be of your word? What's it going to take for you to realize? I need to get it right. I need to get it right. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe you're here today and you're lost. Nobody looking around, please. I'm getting ready to open the altars. Maybe you're here today and you're lost. You're undone without God. Won't you come? Won't you fix the problem? Won't you come? Let God save you today. Oh, it'll be so worth it. It'll be so worth it. To know that you're prepared for the day of judgment. Would you do it, sinner friend, today? There's no exits in hell. There's no way out. Brother Andrew will not pray you out. Your mother and father will not fast you out of hell. Won't you come on, sinner friend? Get it right, get it right, get it right. Get it right. Maybe here today, and I've been preaching to you. You say, Brother, I got Jonah on board my ship. Jonah's on board my ship, preacher. Won't you come on, cast Jonah off? Won't you get him off? Come on. Before you sink, before you go to hell. Before everybody comes, I would love for you to be honest with God today. Jonah was honest. Before I open this altar to the whole church, won't you have enough of nerve today to say, Preacher, Jonah's on board my ship, but he's getting off today. Would you come kneel down right here? Pray, talk to God. Come on, come on. Get Jonah off the ship. Get him off the ship. If you be honest with God, I promise he'll be honest with you. Listen, I'm not worried about if Jonah's on your ship. Uh, it's not going to belittle my confidence in you. I'm not worried about that. I want to help get you to heaven today. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Make haste. Come on. Oh, I'm pleading for souls that's weighed in the balance today. Somebody's going to go to hell. Somebody's going to hell. Come on. I'm getting ready to open altars to everybody. You're going to miss your opportunity to be honest with God. Would you let's gather these altars. Let's talk to God, everybody. Come on, let's talk to God. Jonah. Can God help me get Jonah off the ship? Help me get Jonah off the ship, Lord. Help me cast him off, Lord. Come on, sinner friend. Come on, sinner friend. Call to the Lord. 